Let's now explore briefly the rise of absolutism and the establishment of a centralized French state. The French experience takes on special meaning when compared with the emergence of the highly decentralized German state. A first key point is that a relatively coherent French ident identity developed in the context of a population that had relatively stable boundaries. The key question involved the relationship between the populace and its hereditary leadership, rather than whether or not there was a populace at all. The dominant cultural group, really since the Iron Age, or in the neighborhood of, let's say, of the 8th to the 12th centuries BC, had been the Celts, or the Gauls. Through colonization from the south by the Greeks and, and then more extensively by the Romans, the Gauls had much contact with Mediterranean peoples. Many Gauls, for example, served in Roman legions. The Roman Empire itself began to break down in the neighborhood of the third century, owing in part to pressure from the Germanic tribes along its northern frontier. During this period of the growing erosion in, in Roman rule, Christianity provided a new pathway for aristocratic authority. In the, initially a, a persecuted sect, the Christian religion, flourished with, with uh, imperial sanction in the area that would now eventually become France, with the, the nobility, the landed nobility, in many cases gaining positions in the church, episcopal positions in the church. In the 5th century, when the Roman Empire came to an end, Gaul was conquered by the Germanic Franks, whose leader had adopted the, the, the Catholic form of Christianity. The dominance of Catholicism in France and a relationship between Christianity and the state thus dates all the way back to the 5th century through the present. France experienced relative disunity and civil war until the emergence in the 8th century of Charlemagne. Now, according to the uh, customs of the Franks, the Frankish customs, all the possessions of our king were distributed among the king's sons, a practice that pretty much generated regular struggle and, and civil war. A succession of popes had built close relations with select French leaders, with the popes basically journeying to anoint leaders and the leaders helping the papacy fight wars. Charlemagne and the pope reintroduced the idea and fact of empire as the pope crowned him emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, holy now because it was Christian. Charlemagne became sole ruler, ruler of the Franks and he institutionalized the process of of undertaking wars in order to gain title to land and prestige, uh, a process that really became characteristic of Euro European struggles for the next 1,200 years. The Pope in 800 crowned him Emperor of the Romans, and he ruled a great deal of the territory across Europe. But after his rule, Charlemagne's rather lengthy rule, the Holy Roman Empire lar largely fell apart, disintegrating into competing states. A treaty among Charlemagne's descendants divided this empire into three different areas of land, one of which that corresponds roughly to France today, one that corresponds roughly to, to Germany today, and the third corresponding pretty much to the terrain between France and Germany over which they fought for the next thousand or so years. Now, an emperor was indeed restored 400 years later in around 12, the neighborhood of 1250. But that empire was largely limited to greater German territory, and its history became one of regular tensions amid, amidst different states and, and the emperor. In the French case, however, the key political question, and this, this is really our second key point, became that of a relationship between the land-owning French nobility and a monarchy. In other words, the main tensions were within the scope of the array of leaders who could be called or call themselves French. In contrast, no clear German identity would emerge until the 19th century. Now, early on in France, the, the monarchy, the, the French crown, 
was actually subordinate to the, to the feudal lords. Um, for example, in the 11th century, uh, William the Conqueror, who was a duke, was actually stronger than the king at the time, King Philip I. But the key story here is that slowly, over time, the monarchy gradually accumulated greater powers to rule. And at the same time, France developed itself a more coherent identity. In other words, the story here is of relative slow development, but a slow a concentration built upon expanding military control. <coughs> 